thanks everyone for coming today. Really appreciate it. I uh, hope you've been, and been enjoying Cockroach, or sorry, Roach Fest as much as I have. I'm Parker Timmerman. I'm an engineer at Materialize, and today I'll be talking about how we are planning for scale with Cockroach DB. So, a quick agenda. Uh, first, we'll be going over what is Materialize. You know, I'll introduce you to our product and to our core value prop. A little story time, talk about transitioning from a single binary product into a cloud native database. Some of the decisions we made when moving to a cloud native database and the architecture evaluation. Uh, the eventual partnership we made with Cockroach Labs and the benefits of that. How we run Cockroach today in production and what we're looking forward to towards in the future. Followed finally by a couple of lessons learned as we deployed Cockroach. Cool, so let's get started. First, what is Materialize? Well, Materialize is an operational data warehouse. The idea is you register interest, if you will, in some uh, SQL queries by creating views. And these views can be arbitrarily complex. They can contain as many joins as you want, uh, as arbitrary, arbitrary computations. Then the neat thing, our core value prop, is you can create an index on that view. And as data comes in, whether it's being streamed in from Kafka, or whether it's table inserts, we will incrementally update the result of that view. So any reads to it, we're targeting sub 10 milliseconds for query time. In SQL speak, what we provide are incrementally maintained materialized views. Now, two key properties of materialize is again, we wanna be fast. We're targeting sub 10 millisecond queries, but at the same time, we wanna be correct. We adhere to strict serializability by default. And right, and doing both of these things is kinda of difficult. Trying to go fast and be correct isn't the easiest thing, but spoiler alert, CockroachDB helps us kind of balance this tension. A little bit of story time. In 2020, when we first released our product, it was just a single binary. It was Materialized D. We'd ship this to the user and they'd run it on their own machine, whether that be a laptop or an instance from EC2, a rack in your own data center, or you get a single binary. This was great for us. We could focus on what we're trying to do, which is incremental computation, but it had some drawbacks, right? You're limited to a single node. So your database can only be as large as the machine you can buy. And also there's no fault tolerance. So you need to upgrade this machine, whether it be to make it bigger, whether it be to upgrade the OS, so there's a bug in Materialize, they, they do happen. Um, your database is gonna go down and that's just not acceptable for production environment. So in 2022, we decided to make the switch to a cloud native product. Right, the goals here were high availability, we're chasing those nines, and horizontal scalability. Data is ever growing and we should be able to grow with that. At the same time, we need to maintain the speed and correctness that were the original key properties. We can't all of a sudden start delivering inconsistent or incorrect results. And so that's a, kind of a big feat. As we're planning and uh, coming up with the architecture for our move to the cloud, to a, to the cloud transition, the des design philosophy we had was to reduce operational burden as much as possible by using managed services. So for example, we use Amazon EKS for our Kubernetes clusters and Amazon S3 for our uh, durable blob storage. But it's left a question, what service do we use the metadata layer? For example, what, what do we use to store what tables and views a user's created? And how do we link those blobs in S3 to the tables that they should belong to? So to start, we had a couple of contenders. Right? We're already an Amazon shop. So we had uh, DynamoDB and RDS and Aurora as possible metadata layers. FoundationDB was up there. Everyone knows it's a pretty decent database. But then also Cockroach. Cockroach is up and coming and is a pretty uh, cool product. We whittled these down by using a couple of requirements. We're going back to our key properties. We need to be strongly consistent and so does our metadata layer. And fortunately, all of these databases are strongly consistent, so that was pretty easy. But the second is low latency. Right, we're targeting sub 10 millisecond reads out of an index. So our metadata layer also needs to be quite fast. And in our testing, that eliminated DynamoDB. With our testing during this evaluation phase, we were seeing 10 to 20 millisecond reads, so DynamoDB didn't cut it. The next requirement was scalability. Materialize is relatively connection hungry. All of our compute and storage pods open individual connections to the metadata layer. And in fact, they might open a couple of connections for connection pooling. So you can see very quickly how even just a single user might have tens or hundreds of connections to our metadata layer, and that eliminated RDS and Aurora. During this uh, evaluation phase, we saw that these products had a hard cap of 5,000 connections, and that just didn't work for us. Very quickly, we'd run into those scaling limits. Now, we could run multiple instances of RDS and Aurora, 
But again, with that design philosophy of reducing operational burden, if we didn't have to, why should we? And the final was a managed solution. Again, trying to reduce operational burden, we could spend engineering effort to spin up a foundation DB cluster or spin up another database cluster. But if we didn't have to do that, if we could devote those resources towards solving the hard problems of incremental computation, then we should. So that eliminated foundation DB from list of contenders, eventually just left us, left us with Cockroach. Cockroach DB was the only product we found that satisfied all of these requirements. So it's what, we, it's, what we, it's what we went with. So what do we actually use Cockroach for? I mentioned before we use it to store uh, some metadata about objects, database objects, what tables and views were created. But perhaps more importantly, we use it for our distributed or horizontally scalable storage layer. So we use S3 for blob storage. Uh, but we have this internal service called Persist, which maps from these more simple concepts of blobs to the data structures more native to timely data flow, specifically this concept of a partial time varying collection. Now, that's a bit of jargon, but timely data flow is the foundation or it's the framework that makes up materialize. It's what enables us to do that incremental compute. And so Persist and partial time varying collections are the data abstraction core to timely data flow. So this persist service is what maps, again, these blobs to these PTVCs, as we call them. And it uses Cockroach to do this mapping, but also uses Cockroach to provide consensus. Right in our system, we'll have multiple different readers and writers. You can have multiple storage nodes writing into a shard. A shard, in this case, is you can think of that as a table. And you have multiple compute nodes reading from this same shard. And so we need to make sure that everyone, every reader and writer has the most up-to-date data, and we don't do any sort of double reads or double inserts or something. So we power consensus by essentially this SQL query right here. We have this table called consensus, and it has a shard ID and a sequence number. Again, a shard ID is kind of a unique identifier for a table. The sequence number is an auto-incrementing number, kind of a version counter. And the data, in this case, is a reference of uh, it's a blob identifiers. What blobs in S3 make up the data in a given shard? So when we're updating, we'll insert for a given shard ID, we'll auto-increment the sequence number, the new sequence number, and insert a new list of blobs, right? Maybe this is we're compacting some data, maybe this is um, some new writes or inserted into a table. And then this query has been crafted very carefully, and I'll get into that a little bit in the performance optimizations. We only, this query will only succeed if the most recent sequence number is our expected sequence number. Right, does this current writer, does this current, it does this current writer have the most up-to-date view of a given shard? And so if it doesn't, if it doesn't have the expected sequence number, then this query will fail. So we're essentially using some tra transaction semantics here. And why don't we just do, you know, begin blah, 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 commit? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. But that essentially leaves us, the current cloud architecture of Materialize are these two different regions, US East 1 and EU West 1, aptly named after the same AWS regions. In each region, we have a CRDB cluster and an S3 bucket. That's what makes up that internal service called Persist. And we have some Kubernetes clusters, which is where customer environments actually run. So today, these regions are totally siloed. There is no communication between them two. One day, if we want to tear these silos down and be, build cross-region environments. What we're excited about is Cockroach is already there to do that for us. Our metadata layer scales to that uh, cross-region requirement, which is one of the reasons we chose for Cockroach and we're planning to scale in the future is this geo-distributed setup. But you know, we'll see, that's a couple years out. So during this evaluation phase, when we started working with Cockroach and we chose them, it was great to build a relationship with Cockroach Labs themselves. We, had a, we established a design partnership, and so as we're building, as we're designing our whole system, making sure that what we thought Cockroach could do, they could actually do. That way, you know, both sides come away happy. We have a product we know works, and they have a happy customer. What's great, as we worked with them, uh, they're very apt and ready to receive feedback and acted on it very quickly. So they added a number of features that we'd requested, Amazon CloudWatch metrics, SSO, among others. Was, uh, during this process, we also had monthly leadership check-ins and weekly tech syncs, which again, just to make sure everyone's on the same page and that we are a happy customer, to which thumbs up we are. How do we run Cockroach in production right now and what are we looking towards in the future? So Materialize in its cloud native, uh, the cloud native state, the cloud native product, we went to private preview of October 2022. So we're still relatively young. We, went into, we were production ready, if you will, on February 1st, 2023. And the great but also kind of scary thing was some of our private preview customers had already begun running production, uh, production workloads on Materialize. Glad to see that it worked. A little bit scary, kept me up at night, but it's still pretty good. 
Now we're accepting free trials for qualified users. Basically, folks reach out and we'll pair them with a field engineer, very similar to what Cockroach did for us, just to make sure that the experience is good on both ends. So our Cockroach cluster, we have a couple of them. Our largest cluster uh, is eight nodes, or sorry, six nodes, with each with eight virtual CPUs and 32 gigs of memory that currently sits around 50 to 60% CPU usage, and we're quite happy with it right there. This cluster can sustain 2,000, or at any given time, has 2,000 outstanding connections and can sustain 2,000 insert statements per second. It was great in terms of like operational readiness and making sure our product as a whole is healthy as we can plumb Prometheus metrics from Cockroach, directly from Cockroach, into our Grafana dashboards. So now we have one page, one layout to make sure that all of Materialize is happy from our Kubernetes clusters to our application metrics to, uh, to our Cockroach clusters. So it makes it really easy just to monitor the health of the entire system. So that's fantastic. And we're confident not only with the, like, the scaling regions, but also with scaling performance, that Cockroach will continue to do well for years to come. Cool. So, a little bit of performance optimizations and some learnings we took away as we built and deployed uh, our product with Cockroach. First, minimize the garbage collection interval. That's what we found worked well for us. Cockroach, as some of you probably know, is an MVCC database, and so under write-heavy workloads, a lot of versions can pile up. Materialize is a write-heavy use case, and so we were having a lot of versions pile up, which was slowing down reads. So we turned our garbage collection interval down as much as possible. I think the, minimal, the minimum is 10 minutes. And that allowed us to, while well, it spiked CPU usage to do garbage collection, allowed our reads to get a lot faster. And as a trade-off, we're more than happy to make uh, higher CPU usage for faster reads. The other, and arguably one of the most important, is this one phase commit fast path. Where Cockroach is a distributed database, but if you tune your queries in a very specific way, like that consensus query I showed earlier. It allows the entire query to have only two network trips, as far as I understand, and someone, I might be wrong, but two network trips. One to the cockroach node, that single node computes the entire transaction, and then just a single response back to us. This allows inserts into that consensus table to happen in a transactional way in single digit millisecond latencies. So it's been super powerful to hit those performance requirements and give us consistency and correctness. When uh, figuring out if your queries are hitting this fast path, there is this explain, analyze, verbose option. If you look for the auto commit keyword, I believe that's the right thing to indicate that you are indeed hitting this fast path. So that's been huge. That's really what's allowed us all the way back in the beginning to balance that tension of going fast and being correct at the same time. And not specific necessarily to Cockroach, but for us, uh, our consensus table, we paired these unique identifiers, those shard IDs, with an auto incrementing sequence number. And so we know the way our data is formatted that for a given shard ID sequence number pairing, that data will never change. So that's allowed us to cache data in some cases outside of Cockroach and be able to read it, and read it while maintaining consistency. So just a database pattern in general. Awesome, well, a couple of just final thoughts. For us, building on managed services really has successfully reduced operational burden. Still with a relatively small team, we've been able to build a large product. And so using managed services has been huge. And the choice of Cockroach really has served us well. The performance promise is real, right? We are seeing single digit millisecond latencies the majority of the time. Uh, the scalability promise is real. I checked a couple of weeks ago and I think it is just literally three clicks in the web UI to scale up our cluster, which is fantastic. Don't have to worry about version upgrades or allocating new nodes. We just change a couple of settings and they handle the rest. And while the product is great, the team's been fantastic. It's been great building with Cockroach Labs because they've been a bit opened up great channels of feedback, and it really helped us sand down the rough edges. So that's it. I really appreciate everyone coming out today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Roachfest and New York. Thank you.